Are you looking for some quick and easy weeknight meals? Well, then you've come to the right place. I have got four quick and easy meals to make for your family. So come on along. Let's get cooking. Hello, family and friends. I'm Susan, and welcome to my home. Are y'all ready for four more amazing meals this week? I have got four quick and easy weeknight meals to make it easier for you to put a meal on the table during the weeknights. And if this is your first time visiting, my name's Susan, and welcome. Tonight we're going to be making a low country boil, one of our favorite meals. Um, it's very quick and simple. You don't realize how quick it is until you start actually doing the cooking. Within 30 minutes, you've got a big meal to put on the table with just a few ingredients. You just got to know how to time it and put it in. So my ponytail is already up. Let's go ahead and get to making a low country bowl. And let's go over the ingredients for the low country bowl. I've got some steam and savor potatoes. I've got 24 ounces, which I'm not gonna do that much, use that much, probably about half of this. I've got one lemon, one whole Vidalia onion. I've got some Polska kielbasa. I've got some corn on the cob, half a stick of butter, some zatarans, some slap your mama, and some medium shrimp that is not peeled, but I believe it is deveined. So, and I'm going to put all the shrimp in there. Probably should only put half because I'm half in the recipe, but I love shrimp. We'll, we'll eat it all. Won't be a problem with that. So let's go ahead and start making the Low Country Bowl and show you how simple and easy this can truly be. You get all of your ingredients prepped and ready to go, and it moves really quick. Now that the water's starting to boil, let's get going on adding everything. I'm going to go ahead and add my crab boil seasonings. And I'm also going to add an onion that's cut in quarters. And try not to burn myself. Because <laughs> it will splash. And a lemon that I've cut in half. It just gives extra good flavor to it. I'm going to wait to add my butter to a little bit further whenever I add the potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and let this cook with this mixture for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna add the potatoes. Woo, now we got this thing a rolling and a boiling. What I'm gonna add next are the potatoes. They are small little potatoes. Usually whenever you make this, you do bigger potatoes and it takes a little longer. I'm not gonna do that long on these. I think five minutes would be plenty on these little tiny potatoes. Make sure I got all of them. I do, okay. Now that's gonna cool it down for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and wait till it boils and then put it on a five minute timer and then we'll come back and add the next item. Woo, and we're rolling and bowling. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the kielbasa. Hopefully I've got enough water in here. Like I said, I'm hoping it's big enough. It's just about big enough. All right, I've added a little bit more water. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back up to boil because apparently the boiling is depleting some of the water. Now these polskas only need to cook for about five minutes and then they'll be ready. So like I said, it's quick, it's simple, it's add, 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 and then you've got a great meal. So let's get these going for five minutes, then we'll add some of the other ingredients. Now that everything is boiling, I'm going to go ahead and add the half a stick of butter. Sometimes you add it before, sometimes you add it in the middle. I like to add it right before I put the corn in. Now the corn is frozen. It is not defrosted. So I know when I drop this in, it's going to reduce the temperature in the water. So I'm going to need to do the corn for 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and drop them in. Like I said, it's going to reduce the temperature. You're going to see it go down and stop boiling. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this come up to a boil. It should take about 10 minutes all total to let it come up to a boil and be boiling. Once it boils, it's not going to take it long to get the corn, but it's got to come back up to a boil, which is pretty hot now. So I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes all total. I'm gonna go ahead and add the shrimp in, and the shrimp are going to bring it down to temp a lot. But let me go ahead and get all these dispersed. It's only gonna take about three or four minutes and these shrimp are gonna be done. It ain't gonna take long. So I'm gonna watch the bowl and watch the shrimp. Once they turn orange, it's time to pull them out. So, we're in the final stages. It didn't take 30 minutes, and we're about ready to eat. 
The shrimp are nice and orange. It's time for me to get everything out except for the corn. I want to leave the corn in to the last minute because they are the one thing that take the longest. But everything that's floating needs to come off. And then those will be the last things to go on the plate. And here we go. Low Country Bull. It's what's for supper tonight. Are you ready for some good Mexican food? Well, tonight I am going to be making some beef and bean tacos. One of my family favorites. It's on a regular rotation around here. And tonight is the night. So, I've already got it up. It's time to get cooking. Let's make some beef and bean tacos. You try it. You will love it. And, of course, we're doing the beef and bean taco skillet today. I have done this recipe already in a video, but I'm going to do a quick run over of all the ingredients. can of pinto beans, drained, not rinsed. A can of rotel, which you know I use the Mexican style. Some red cap adobo. I've got some Mexican blend cheese. Some onion, and it calls for a half a sweet onion, which is what I used. And one pound of ground beef that I've already browned and drained. So it's ready to roll. I'm going to go ahead and do two sprinkles of the adobo around the meat. I am going to add the onions in. I am going to add the taco seasoning, which is one packet, which if you use the big container like I do, with taco seasoning, then you need two tablespoons of taco seasoning. One, two, all right, two tablespoons. Now I'm gonna also add in the rotel and the pinto beans that are drained, not rinsed. So they do have a little bit of uh, fluid in them, but not much. And now I'm going to mix this all together. And then I'm going to cover this up and this is gonna cook for about five minutes. So it makes a quick eat. Once you, once you brown the hamburger meat, you are good because this only takes about five minutes. I'm gonna cover it up, put it on a medium low and it will create some juices. But make sure everything is nicely stirred in. And you see how much juice it has made? It has made a lot of juice. So this is ready to go in a taco. You can add a little more adobo if you want to. I think it's probably good as is, because y'all know we're gonna spice it up. Let's get it on the tacos. That's a little bit too much, I think. And now you know, we like the hot. Spicy. Take a taco sauce. Okay. I'm going to do some daisy sour cream, which I'm about out. I'm going to go get me another squeezable. And. I actually found a thing of Mexican blend cheese that was already defrosted, so I'm going to go ahead and use that up. All right. And there's Danny's tacos. Y'all know the drill. Let me get me a bowl and make me some taco nachos. Okay. And here's how I make my nachos of sorts. Lots of taco chips, tortilla chips, in the bowl. Now I'm going to put some taco meat on the chips. All right. And of course, I'm going to spice it up just like I did his tacos. Christmas red and green. And some taco sauce. I'm gonna put 
some sour cream on it also. And Mexican cheese. So it'll all nice and melt. And this is so good. Like I said, it's a step above just a taco. It is amazing. When you're trying to make some healthy recipes, coming across one that looks really good is always a good thing. I have found some garlic chicken. I love garlic. We will see how good it tastes tonight whenever we make it. So, my ponytail is up. Let's get to cooking. And let's make some creamy garlic chicken. We've got some olive oil, some minced garlic, salt and pepper, heavy whipping cream. We've got some chicken broth, a little bit of flaked parsley, and of course our chicken, which I am about to butterfly them to make them thinner. Then we'll start seasoning up the breast. So let's go ahead and get going on this so we can get those cooking. I butterflied my chicken breast. It calls for two chicken breasts butterflied. I had three in the pack and that's what I'm gonna do. Let me get some salt and pepper on both sides of them and then we'll get them in the pan and start the cooking. Now this is getting hot. I'm gonna go ahead and place the chicken breast into the pan. See if I can get all of them to fit. Cause I really need them all to fit cause I don't wanna do two loads. Cause I ain't got but just a dab. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let this brown for about three to four minutes per side, depending on how brown it gets and how quick. Um, it's going to be about medium heat to what I've got it on right now. I did put two tablespoons of oil in here. And let's get these going, and we'll come back in a little bit. And it's been about four minutes. And look. I'm trying to get these to how nice and brown those are. Those are ready to put. I try to put the bigger ones in the middle, the little ones on the outside. And go ahead and get these split. Do these for another three to four minutes on that side. And then we'll be ready to add the rest of the ingredients. Look how beautiful that chicken looks. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of the ingredients in. I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic in. And I'm going to go ahead and let this get a little bit fragrant. I was worried that what all the juice that was in here might have been just oil, but it's not. It's actually chicken juices. I'm going to add in the chicken broth. The heavy whipping cream. The dried parsley. and some more salt and pepper. Probably don't need to add as much salt because we did have the um, chicken broth that was not low sodium, which Danny and I are not low sodium kind of people, although we probably need to be. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it and let it cook on medium heat for about five, 10 more minutes, and then it'll be ready to go and the sauce in here should thicken as it cooks a little bit. It smells wonderful. So definitely that garlic sauce is gonna make some really good sauce to put over top of some chicken. So let's give this a little bit of time to cook and thicken up, and then we'll see where we're at. And it sat for a little while while Danny was mowing the grass. So now it's time to plate it up. Well, let's get a couple pieces of chicken on the plate. that. This. Now if you want a thicker sauce, then all you have to do is put a little bit of um, flour into the mix a little, and make it a little roux. But I think that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and get out the corn on the cob. And some chicken rice. I think it says chicken and broccoli rice, if I'm not mistaken. But it's good. And it will be good. And there we go. We've got the garlic chicken and some rice and corn on the cob. 
And that's what's for supper tonight. I tell you what, guys, you ain't from the South if you hadn't had a salmon patty. That is just one of the staples that was not just a staple in this house, but my grandmother's house. We had it at least, not once a week, but probably at least once or twice a month. You know, quick, easy, simple, just a few ingredients, and you've got a good meal. So, let's go ahead and get to making a Southern classic salmon patties, just like my grandma made. And let's get started on a quick and easy meal. This is always something you can run to if you ain't got but a few minutes and put it together. I've got some salmon in a can I've already drained, Old Bay seasoning, an egg, and then we're gonna use half a sleeve of saltine crackers, some black eyed peas, Lowry seasoning, and some mixed greens. So let's get to mixing up the patties. So I have got the mixed greens with a little bit of Lowry seasoning in it, and the black eyed peas with a little bit of Lowry seasoning in it with some water added. On the oven, go ahead and cooking. I've got the frying pan with some oil in it, heated up. Now it's time to show you how quick and easy it is to get the salmon patties put together. Put the salmon patties in there. Drain off any extra juice that happened to pour out because you definitely don't want it, don't need it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put some Old Bay seasoning on here. Not a lot, just a few shakes. You want a little bit of flavor, not a ton. I'm going to go ahead and add one egg to the mix. And half a sleeve of crackers. What I usually do is just put them in my hands and then mush them really, really good because you want them completely smushed up. You don't want big pieces. If you see any big pieces, grab them. Smush them a little more. That way you get everything completely smushed in the thing. Like I said, about a sleeve of crackers. You need a little salt and pepper. And now all you do is mix it up. Hate to say it, but you gotta get in there with your hands and get it all going. Whenever the crackers get that egg and absorb it, they will get soft and it just makes it a better texture. Helps hold it together is what it's doing. Now what I normally do is make the size patty you like. It's only Danny and I, so we make salmon patty steaks, kind of. We make a, I make them big. That's just the way I do it. And that way we each get a patty. If you had multiple family members, make multiple patties. And then make a lot of sides, and you've got plenty of food to go around. So let's go ahead and get these in the pan. It doesn't take long to get that golden brown color on the bottom. I don't know if you can look how golden brown that is. It is beautiful. Just be careful when you flip them because they are fragile. Woo. And I'm getting popped with oil, but that's okay. There we go. Let's let that side get as brown as this side is, and then we'll be ready to do some eating. And now we've got some nicely browned. Look at that. Salmon patties. Let's go ahead and get them plated up. And let's get the salmon patty itself. Look how beautiful that looks. Some black eyed peas. And some mixed greens. I love the kind in the can. It makes it easy. I know some people say, oh, I'll cook them. I love the can version. They're just really really tasty and there we go salmon patty black eyed peas mixed greens it's what's for supper tonight four more amazing quick and easy meals i hope that you have enjoyed this week's recipes they were quick and easy and simple and delicious something that you could put together on a weeknight without any problem and don't forget to stop in again next week on sunday whenever I put my next video out. So, until then, have a great week. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, press that button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. And let our family be a part of your family.